Now, let's talk about what's different. And what is different is the calculation of that cost of goods manufactured. Now, we saw it on the cost flows. We know that cost of goods manufactured is the cost of the units completed during the period. The costs of the units that came out of uh, work in process inventory because they were finished during the period. Um, notice also, this I didn't use this earlier, but cost of goods manufactured is going to be all of the costs that were incurred in the factory to complete units during the period. So cost of goods manufactured are factory costs. And the account that reflects the fa factory cost is work in process. So this big schedule that we're about to prepare looks daunting. Don't let it fool you. It's not really that hard. We just need to think about what's going on inside that factory and then we assemble that information into a report form, a schedule that we present to management. Okay. Alright, so what's our starting point? Well, I said earlier that uh, the cost incurred in the factory are accumulated in the work in process inventory account. So that's our starting point. Work in process inventory beginning. Work in process inventory beginning. And again, I'll abbreviate work in process WIP. Now, let's just make up some numbers here. Let's say that our beginning uh, work in process inventory balance was $20. We're going to keep little numbers just to keep the illustration simple. Now, what costs are added to work in process during the period as production occurs. Well, remember, the product costs are materials, labor, and manufacturing overhead. So the first product cost that's added is usually direct materials used. So to the beginning work in process, we're going to add direct materials used. But, notice I put a little colon out here, we have to calculate this. We have to calculate this. So to calculate direct materials used, well, direct materials came out of raw materials inventory. So that's where we go next. We start with uh, the raw materials beginning inventory. And again, just to keep things simple, let's say that our beginning raw materials inventory was $5. Now, where would I get that? Well, I'd pull it from the accounting records. You, in your problems, will pull it from the data that's given to you in the uh, data section of the exercise and problems. Okay, so raw materials beginning inventory. What increases raw materials? Well, purchases of raw materials. So this is going to look like a calculation of cost of goods sold for the merchandiser. Beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending equals cost of goods sold for the merchandiser. Well, beginning raw materials inventory plus purchases minus ending raw materials inventory will equal direct materials used for the manufacturer. So it's not new, it's just a little different. So let's add that. We'll add the purchases of raw materials. Which I'm just going to abbreviate RM for space purposes. And let's say that our purchases of raw materials totaled $50. Okay. Then we're going to subtract out the ending raw materials inventory. <clears throat> and again, for the sake of illustration, let's say that our ending raw materials inventory was six dollars. So 
So that's going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, that's going to give us a subtotal. The beginning raw materials inventory plus purchases of raw materials minus raw materials ending inventory from the physical count is going to give us the raw materials used. So what do we got? 55 minus 6, our raw materials used is 49. $49. Now, remember when we were going over cost flows, raw materials may be direct or indirect. So if both our direct and indirect materials are kept in the same account, if the problem doesn't tell you that this is only direct materials in this account, then what we're going to have to do next is we're going to have to subtract out the portion of these raw materials used that were indirect materials or manufacturing overhead. Because we're going to account for the manufacturing overhead a little further down on the schedule. So we're going to subtract out the indirect materials and let's say that indirect materials total three dollars And finally, raw materials used minus indirect materials is going to yield the direct materials used in production this period. So direct materials used. 49 minus 3, our direct materials used, is 46. Now, Remember, direct materials on our cost flows, direct materials used were added to work in process inventory. Well, my work in process beginning inventory is out here in this column, so I'm going to extend the raw materials, or excuse me, the direct materials used out to that far column instead of showing it here. Makes my numbers easier to read and follow, uh, to, to follow the math on this. So again, 49 minus 3, my direct materials used was 46. So I extend that 46 out to the far column. 